We are gathered here today on the occasion of Maki Zenin versus Yuta Okotsu. Uh, for rules and stuff, this is just a clean battle one-on-one. -on -one, no outside surroundings, poison, etc., etc. Just straight up, hand-to-hand, -hand, or sword to Rika. Whatever, you get what I mean. Anyway, let's begin the battle. Let's go over Yuta first. Now, we'll go over his early days, then to his old days. So in his early days, he didn't have full control over Rika, but that's not relevant. Now that he does have Rika, he is much more powerful. Rika is a special grade curse. Yes, a special grade. And Yuta has a special grade as one of his best friend, lover, etc., etc. Rika, while being a special grade, when activated, Rika is, number one, a very powerful, being special grade, which means I can do blunt force, etc., etc., while also giving Yuta near-infinite cursed energy. Along with being second to Gojo Satoru, he has one of the hardest techniques to master, Reversed Curse Technique. If you don't know what Reverse Curse Technique is, it's the process of turning the negative in energy into positive energy by multiplying them together or something. A lot of mathematics in that. But Reverse Curse Technique is much more than that. It has the ability to full-on revive wounds, but it does have a set timer. You can't just get a massive blow in your skull goal sit around wait for three and a half years and then call it a day and then use it the moment you're about to die along with that he also knows cursed speech with minimal drawbacks he is also minus all those abilities a great swordsman who can easily hold his own with nothing but his swordsman skill time to go over some feats number one he was able to hold his own up against Kenjaku or G Ghetto, I don't know. When he has a ton of ludicrous abilities, he got monster summonings, friggin' he's pulling in Playful Cloud, he's using Full Uzumaki, he's doing a ton of stuff. And he was able to hold his own and even beat him, if, even if Kenjaku, Ghetto, whatever, I don't know. Even if he would've been able to kill Yuta. Next... He was able to take on three, four, actually, at least grade one sorcerers who, in the cooling games, had 70 points or higher. Kurarushi, I believe, was known as like a demon who got awoken. The Sky Lady had the ability to turn the sky into fabric. Uh, Ishigori had the biggest pool of cursed energy we had ever seen. I think minus Gojo. And Yuta clapped them up. Bro, my mans was even a player to the cursed spirit and decided to give him a nice French kiss to kill him. That's not mentioning this man's durability. He caught one of Ishigori's granite blasts with his freaking hands like we're playing some baseball here. Well, anyway, that was all I had to say about Yuta Okotsu. Moving on, let's discuss Maki Zenin. Moving on to Maki Zenin. We're talking about her awakened form here, not her form where she can not even take down a grade 1 sorcerer. Speaking of grade 1 sorcerer, I think one of her biggest feats is quite literally taking down over we know we don't know the confirmed list of, of just how many people she took down but she took down the entire zenin clan every single one except nabito but nabito had died previously that might have been a actual bigger bet but we know from toji zenin who we know is equal to maki as it is stated in the manga we know that Toji could have taken down the entire, yes, the entire Zenin claim by himself. And we know Maki is equal 
to Toji. Therefore, even in Toji's day, she could have taken down the entire Zenin clan, Nabuto included. Along with that, she still had to deal with someone that had a similar curse technique, Naoya. Now, Naoya was, you know, kind of a bad guy, as in, he, he, he was a good sorcerer. And it took her near one blow. I know Maki's mom killed him, but he would have died most likely anyway. That seemed to be a fatal blow. It's even stated in the manga that most likely one blow and you're going to die. That is fatal. One blow from her fist, not even her sword. Now, my math may be off on this, but let's just decide here. So how many newtons of force does it take to kill an average human being? Alright, 3,000 newtons per square centimeter. Now, let's look up the size of a female hand, full grown. 6.8 inches. So let's just take this as Maki's hand, let's just say. Which this works out to about 17 centimeters, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know if my math is right, but I think that that works out to 17. Keep in mind Google, but I'm not sure if this equation is right. All right, so what's 17 times 3,000? Maki Zenin hits, if you, if you multiply those, correct me if I'm wrong, just I'm doing 17. It is 51,000 Newtons of force. For for just a little, you know, leeway here. Let's let's say it's fifty thousand. Let's round it up here. Now the average for a normal boxer is two thousand five hundred newtons. Maki Zenin is over twenty times that, if I am correct. Moving on from being a nerd, now let's not go over feats. We still have to talk about the fact that she has a sword that would easy counter anything Mahito throws at her. Here's what it is. It's the soul slicer, I think. The soul splitter. It's something with souls, right? It, if Let's say Mahito goes up to Maki. If she hits him with it, it slices right through his soul. It doesn't go through any skin. It goes through the soul. It doesn't, like, like, like let's say... A piece of wood has a soul. It slices... When it goes through the wood, it slices through the soul. Mahito has quite literally nothing on Maki. Now, let's talk also about the fact that she scales up to Toji Zenin. Now, Toji Zenin and Shibuya easily destroyed Megumi Fushigiro in Shibuya. Who, Megumi and Yuji are meant to be equals as far as I'm aware. Which means that Maki scales way above Megumi. Maybe not now, but in Shibuya, she would have easily defeated Megumi. Maybe even Yuji, but, you know, Yuji's main character, so he got some plot armor on him. Now, along with this, let's not forget about Cursed Spirit Naoya. Now, Cursed Spirit Naoya is going Mach 3. And Maki was able to keep up after after a quick sumo, might I add. But still, able to keep up with someone going Mach 3. And you want to know what? Even with a domain. Which, might I add, Maki is immune to domains now. Domains just do not even work on her. She completely destroyed him effortlessly. Now let's talk about her healing factor. Because she has a healing factor now. To the point where when Kamo is getting his butt handed to him by Cursed Spirit Naoya. And he's trying to give uh, Maki, like, I think it was ten minutes. Because she needed to recover. Three to five. And she comes back after two minutes and tells Kamo that... I can't wait for you. You're going to die here. And then she proceeds to defeat Naoya and Cursed. Now, I might say Naoya and Cursed is able to destroy your cells. And she still defeated him. In conclusion, 
even though Maki is a entire beast on her own, I think Yuta Kotsu still outclasses her, even in adaptability, but probably not defense. I don't, I don't see Maki coming out of this alive. It let's say if it's a death match, but still, it would have to be at least a somewhat close battle. I think they would at least put each other to the test. I don't think Maki is a special grade, but she's at least grade one. I'm not going to say that she's not special grade. Now, it's not to downplay her, but Yuta Kotsu quite literally is a special grade in his own right. Not to mention, he has a special grade curse to stand along with him. Anyway, that kind of just wraps it up. Yuta went.